Hello folks, welcome to the seventh and probably the final video of the 2021 Oak Island Fishing Schools video series. Today we're going to talk about chumming. Now it's almost King Mackerel uh, tournament season. In fact, there was a tournament in South Carolina this past weekend. Um, and chumming is one of the methods, one of the techniques that people use to attract king mackerel and hopefully the biggest king mackerel uh, to their boat, but it also works for other species. I am a believer in chumming. Uh, when, when our team won the SKA National Championship, we went into an area with a lot of other boats and dumped a bunch of chum overboard and pulled some of the larger fish out both days. I don't think that was coincidence. I think we brought those fish to us and got them excited. Now, when I talk about chumming to people, I hear all kinds of things about, oh yeah, it's probably a good idea, but I don't do it. It attracts too many sharks. It does this, it does that, it's messy, what have you. It is. To say it attracts a lot of sharks, well, obviously you're doing something right. You're starting a stimulus chain with your chum and sharks are some of the most aggressive of the predators. They're going to come to it first. Sometimes you have to weed through them to get to the king mackerel or whatever species you're after. Uh, I can remember several days that we went through a bunch of sharks before we got the king we wanted, but we stayed in that area. The chum was working, the fish were getting active, and finally after a lot of the, the more aggressive predators got a, a little, what, lip sore, jaw weary, whatever, uh, the lessers eased up there and got excited about it and hit. And that's what it's about. Now, we'll show you as we go in some ways to do this. I chum at three levels for kings. And I also chum when I'm anchored and fishing for large drum or if I'm anchored and, and fishing for kings. But I deploy it a little different that way. So we're going to, I'm going to put some slides up and show you some things. Um, I use a lot of chum. One of the first slides you're going to see is two chummers sitting side by side. One is a hand crank model that goes in a rod holder on your boat and you crank it and put chum out. The other is a two and a half horsepower chipper shredder. I had a custom hopper made for the top of it. We pour five gallons at a time of pogies and mullets, whatever we're going to use for chum. And we do want oily fish for chum. We want fish with gray meat that are going to have some oil in the water. And I like a little bit bigger chunks from my chum uh, but we're going to show you those and then we're going to come back and, and tell you a couple of ways to use your downriggers uh, in chumming and we'll have slides supporting all of this that you can freeze frame or screenshot or whatever you'd like to do so let's put some slides up and we'll be back in just a minute uh, talking about chumming we're going to start from the bottom up Okay, part of the way that I chum begins with using a downrigger. Uh, this is an older one, but it's set up the way that I want it. Came with wire on the spool. I added 150, pound, 150 feet of 80 pound mono to the end. Why 80? Because that was the same diameter as the wire. It was going to uh, work through with the uh, the spool to be the same depth at the same number of turns. I wanted it as simple as possible. The more hardware you put on this, the more likely you are to have blowback and your reading not be exactly accurate. So on that mono, I just start out, this is a foam golf ball. That's all it is. You buy it at your golf pro shop, sports shop, Walmart, wherever you go buy that stuff. This is an outrigger clip turned upside down. There is a crimp right here in the middle of it to lock it in position. And then down at the end, 
I have tied on a big snap swivel. No extra hardware here. This is adjusted for my boat and when it is reeled up to where this ball, foam ball, is hitting the base of the, the outrigger arm, the length of this is just enough so that when I put the downrigger ball on it, that downrigger ball hangs about a foot down in the water when it's over the side. It's just deep enough to not swing back and forth if the boat's rocking in a sea and shallow enough to be out of the way if you have a fish up working it. With your rod tip, you can easily lead it around it. So getting your downrigger set up for your boat and for this is the first part. Now, why is that important? I use basic generic downrigger balls. They have a big eye at the top that you hook to the swivel off the downrigger. Then they have this little eye back at the back. That little eye is where I attach these bottles. This is one of the most important things that I carry with me when I go king mackerel fishing. Now I load these bottles two ways. There's two products on the market and we're going to show you pictures of what the bottles look like. One is Menhaden oil. Menhaden is a reduction fishery. And when they cook it down, they get two things. They get meal and they get oil. We put, start off with the bottle and don't use the bigger one. It's got too much resistance in the water. It'll cause blowback. The smaller 16 or 20 ounce in our drink bottles. Load it with the least expensive large chunk dog food you can find. You don't want the little fine stuff. It has been compressed and it's not going to absorb much oil. What we're going to make here is a time release for that oil. So you start by filling this sucker up with dog food. Just sit there and fill it. I put the bag between my legs and watch sports on TV and fill a dozen or two of them at a time. Then go out way back far in your yard or go down to your dock or whatever and take the menhaden oil and fill the bottle full. Put a regular cap on it set it in a cool and shady area. Don't put it in direct sun. I don't know how it does it, but the sun, is it photosynthesis or whatever, but it will make this swell and ferment, and when you take that cap off, you won't be happy. So put it somewhere cool. Come back in a day or so, you should see the oil levels dropped where the, the dog food chunks have absorbed it. Fill it back up. It may take a time or two. Fill it until it doesn't take anymore. At that point, put a cap on it and store them. I have a bait freezer, and in the corner I stack some 12-inch boxes, put about six of these in each one, and I store them over there to freeze them. Helps my time release too. Um, when I get to where I'm gonna fish, I pull one of these guys out. I change the cap, I take the regular cap off, and this is my high-tech cap. It's just a large snap swivel, a piece of mono, and I punched a hole in it big enough to run the mono through, but a double knot will keep it from coming out under most circumstances. If something should happen to grab it, it'll pull free. I haven't had that happen yet, but it may. But I screw this on and then clip this in the little eye that's on the back. Now, you're just about to make some holes in it and stuff run. I set the ball in the rod holder on the boat, and then I take my fillet knife and very lightly poke three holes around the top of this and three holes around the bottom. Now, don't just poke the hole through and pull it out. Stick the point in quarter of an inch or so and twist it so you actually make a hole not a slit. This stuff is so thick it's not going to come out. That plastic will go back together and it won't even ooze. So you've got to make a hole. Now you ease it over. Clip in with your release clip that's up high here on the downrigger. Clip the line you want in that one. Whatever bait you want on it. 
and let it down into place. Now I use the Menhaden oil on my deepest downrigger. And those of you that watch the King Mackerel segment, you know that unless I'm marking bait and have a reason to put it differently, I send that down two thirds of the way to the bottom. So say we're in 60 feet of water, I'm gonna send it down 40 feet. So this oil and dog food mix is gonna be down 60 feet. Why do you put it at the bottom? Well, hopefully in your ninth grade science class, you learn that oil is lighter than water and it will work its way back to the surface. So as it works out, it fades back in your spread and slowly comes to the surface. There's a little bit of particle as that dog food breaks up. And every time you change your bait or you bring that downrigger up to fight a fish, look when it's beside the boat and make sure it's still oiling well. If it's not putting out little beads of oil consistently, take that knife, open the hole a little bigger. One of these is gonna last you from two to three hours of normal trolling. That is Menhaden oil mixed with dry chunk style dog food on your deep downrigger for the first part of your chumming. Okay, we've got that Menhaden oil and dog food mix down at the low downrigger. It's trickling out, working its way back through the spread and coming up. Those of you that watch the uh, King Mackerel segment know that I like to fish two downriggers. I fish my shallow downrigger a third of the way to the bottom. I do a similar thing, but I use a different product on it. And again, you'll see the label and what it looks like in a slide. But I use a product called Menhaden Milk. It's a, it's a murky sort of, looks like cobbled cream to me, or, or cobbled cream. It, it's, it, it's not pretty by any means. It's that sort of light khaki color. It's an emulsified Menhaden oil. They have taken some of the water out of it. And whoever said you can't mix oil and water wasn't thinking about Menhaden oil when they did it because Menhaden oil and water will mix. So I take another one of these bottles, again with the same type of top on it, and I fill it a quarter of the way, maybe a third, with Menhaden milk. Now, you know, if you've got a big high-sided boat, you can't reach all the way over to the water, go back to your, your live well, but stick this down in your live well till it goes just below the surface and fill it the rest of the way up with water right there from where you're fishing. Put your cap on it, attach it to the ball. The ball's attached to your downrigger. Now, this time I brought my fillet knife up. I had dropped it here, but one hole top, just in ever so lightly and just twist it, a little hole, and again on the bottom. Maybe you can see here, just a little hole, and twist it. This is gonna be leaking out. Now, you don't put any dog food in this. If you do, it'll sock up and become a brown bomb and never go anywhere. For this, you're just letting the liquid out. Now, what we're doing with the Menhaden milk is we're just letting it drip out. And because we've reconstituted that with water, it has a neutral buoyancy. It doesn't rush back to the top. In fact, it will come out and sort of filter in that area. It will some gradually work back to the top. Some of it that maybe has a little particle in it might even go down a little bit, but you're getting a scent that's in the middle of your, your spread, halfway between your deep and halfway between the surface. That's what Menhaden milk does. Remember, don't put any dog food with it. It will absorb up in it and lock it up and nothing will ever come out. Now, 
that's the bottles and I like clear bottles I don't know why um, you can use green bottles if you want but the 16 to 20 ounce in our bottles are what you want to use don't use two liters here now for my trolling applications I use the small bottles you put them behind the downrigger ball they don't use any they don't create any additional blowback there is a spot where using a two liter bottle works here and that's when you're inshore or maybe off just off an artificial reef and you're fishing for big drum or cobia or something like that you can use the two liter bottle load it with the dog food chunks and menhaden oil and then use your clip here put it on the last link of anchor chain before your rope that'll hold it off the bottom and every time the boat shifts it'll shake it a little and put a little bit more out that's the way that I use two liter bottles and it does help it will bring your fish in for when you're you're anchored it'll help get them to the boat so you can catch them okay here we are back for the part that everybody thinks about that ground up fish that you hang over the side to attract now to me most of the chum that you buy already ground is too fine it looks pureed to me I want a chum that has a little bit of texture to it maybe a little piece of meat I don't really want to fill up the fish that are coming up and nibbling on it but I want them to know there's something there and the first thing that means is using a chum bag with a little bit bigger mesh so that those bigger pieces can get out sometimes these can be hard to find when they are I go to the drugstores and whatever and go to the uh, laundry bag section and I can usually find these bags there now this is what I use my chipper shredder for we will go out intentionally to catch bait we'll take 278 quart coolers fill them up come back in and go to grind it immediately it'll take a little over an hour we grind it from that into a five gallon bucket then fill up gallon freezer bags put them in the freezer when we get ready to go fishing we grab four or five bags head out put them right in with the ice as we pull one out we put it in here and then rip the bag open so it'll go out now there's a little more to it than just putting this bag over if you drop this bag over and have a bunch of lines so it's just sitting there on the water it's not doing much it's wadded up on itself so I like to take the time to tie it so that only a little bit of it's in the water that way every wave that washes down the side of the boat washes it and sloshes it and puts a little out and the other thing that I also do is I'm watching bait pods and everything on the fish finder and when I see a suspended bait pod or what I think is fish in the water, I call back to one of my crew in the stern and have them go back and grab this bag and just shake it hard. I might pull the boat out of gear for a few seconds, but shake it and get a cloud of chum going down there to get those fish stirred up. So for me, chumming's a three-way street. I start down at the bottom at my deepest downrigger behind it with a bottle of dog food chunks and menhaden oil. At mid-depth, I've got a bottle of menhaden milk that is neutral buoyancy coming out. And then at the top, I've got ground up fish that I ground up either by hand. If I, I carry the chum hand chum grinder, if we get some fresh stuff, we get overage on bait, we'll grind some and knock it over as we're fishing. But I rely on that frozen stuff that I've ground in advance with my chipper shredder. Load up the bag and have chunks coming down from the top. They're sinking. So we've got oil coming up, chunks sinking, going back. Should help you catch fish if they're in the area. Yes, it will attract some sharks. Work through them or get frustrated and leave. But I have had days that I have caught 10 and 12 sharks before that fish hit that gave the reel a different note and we were all smiling once it hit the deck 20 minutes later. Now, this is our final video of this series. We thank you all for coming. 
We want to see you on the water. We, we're, they're relaxing COVID restrictions. We think we're going to be able to do this in person next year. But until then, we wish you the best and good fishing to you.